Well, we're learning how to cherish our marriage because we're new. So we we seek counsel a lot. We do. Not necessarily like counselors, but we love asking other married couples for advice. And we like to pick people's brain and find mentors. I think we also do a good job of um, making time for one another, um, even if it's like a crazy work week on the weekend, making sure we have quality time together. Um, and just letting each other, I mean, just the, the quality time, I think for both of us is a big part of our love language. Um, and to give each other that is to make sure we're still feeling loved and um, taking care of one another, putting each other as a priority. Well, being married to a football coach, you have to know that football comes first. And um, especially during football season or spring practice, you get to cherish your spouse by making sure you take care of everything else so that all they can do is the one thing they love, which is football. My answer would be <laughs> you cut out time when throughout your busy schedule and make sure you do things for them, make them that they know they're appreciated. Just not during football season. The fact is because we tend to complement each other in terms of abilities, right? I, I hope that I can bring a little bit of energy to, to our marriage, but everything with me is up and down. And Lynn just has an even keel about her that just evens everything out when life gets just awful, right? Nothing's that bad. I think that means boring. <laughs> <laughs> lots of Tijuana flats. <clears throat> lots of Tijuana flats. Lots of Tijuana flats. Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. <laughs> He lets me sleep on Saturday mornings. <laughs> and that's better than anything, really, is the fact that I stay in bed and he takes care of children. For us, communication is so foundation, foundational. We, um, like daily, have our time to talk. We come home, we spend a few minutes with the kids, get them started on homework or whatever, and then we tell the girls, we're in a meeting and we're just talking, we're debriefing. You know, they come in and out, but it's one of those, let mom and dad have a few minutes to catch up a little bit. Um, and that's where we can share our heart. That's where we can plan things out. That's where we can vent, you know, whatever we need to do. Probably communication. We take every t chance that we can and we're constantly in communication with each other and um, moments that we can go out. We even go to the grocery store for dates. Well, I think it's important to communicate and um, have those times together. Uh, without kids and remember where it all started um, and just to communicate with each other when you feel like things are a little off it's good to talk about it and it's easy to fix them yeah I think it's okay to marry somebody that's not exactly like you actually I would recommend Better. that uh, <laughs> my wife and I have many 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 similar interests which is great we like the same kind of music and we like outdoor activities mm -hmm. and so when it comes to having fun, we are kind of always in agreement on that. But when it comes to our personalities and how we sort of approach everyday life, we really do balance each other because we're different in a lot of those ways. And I think that's been the secret to almost 12 years of marriage. I think it's just finding quality time to spend together, whether it's as simple as sitting at a table away from our kids. So nice. When our parents are with us, so they're sitting with our kids and or we can not. just sit at a table by ourselves. One thing, for example, is like knowing how each other receives love uh, best. So like your I love could, language? yeah, your yeah. love language. So I could spend all day uh, doing words of affirmation or writing encouraging letters, and she would know that I love her through that. But that's not her primary love language. So part of it's knowing your spouse, either your significant other, and what makes them feel loved the most is important. I was just talking to my father the other night, and I was telling him that. Uh, I'm very, very happy that I hung in there 25 years because in the first five years we probably went through some difficult things and there were times I think we both thought, hey, let's bail. And um, I realized how beautiful our love is now and only time could have ever created that and it reminded me of my grandparents who I saw my grandma after my grandfather had died and lived with her for a year after that and saw what she went through and how much she loved my grandpa. So that's kind of what we're experiencing now is what time creates a special kind of love. Very, very important to realize who you married. Uh, and unfortunately, you probably don't fully realize that until after you married them. Uh, and that um, very few things are going to change um, about them. They are who they are. They are who you married. And I think once you embrace that, uh, you begin to embrace them. And then God does the work 
in what needs to be changed. Yeah, figuring out those love languages really helps a relationship. And you can figure those out as early as high school. But we've realized that over the years, and mentors have told us this before, you kind of date a different person every few years. And I've already seen a new person with just the new jobs that we've had. And it's not like it's bad or anything. It's like an adjustment and it's one that we're a team. We're like this this team that Christ empowered us for to keep to keep growing in the Lord and to keep advancing the kingdom. My mom always told me that marriage comes down to breakfast, lunch, and dinner 50 years from now. So when you're dating someone, don't just date someone because they're good looking or any of those shallow reasons. Try to avoid being alone often because um, especially in this day and age, there's a lot of temptation there. And um, I would build your relationship on Christ and you know studying God's word and praying as much as possible. Certainly um, choose wisely who you even enter a relationship with. And, um, and just communicate a lot, pray a lot, um, really try to seek God in what's important and what's gonna last long term. My advice to girls is remember all guys are dirtbags, all of them. Especially for boys or young men, you know, um, if you really care about the person that you're with, um, then you're gonna want what's best for them and you're gonna want them to do the right thing in front of the Lord. And uh, girls, if anybody's telling you anything other than that, they don't want what's best for you and they don't want what's right for you. So um, as I'm raising two daughters of my own, uh, I hope that they're looking for boys that uh, treat them in a way that honors the Lord, and that's really first and foremost. Everything else kind of works itself out. Be low maintenance and enjoy your time with all of your friends while you're in the midst of, of a dating relationship. Yeah, don't be a bubble couple. If you're dating somebody and you feel like all of your friendships uh, drop off the face of the earth, um, and all of your like healthy friendships disappear and all of your accountability or advice you don't want to listen to anymore, that's probably a pretty big red flag that the relationship's not a, a good idea. Well, I think you have to be with somebody that's going to put Christ first and then I think that you don't settle. I think people have a tendency to settle for things uh, that they shouldn't and you should want what's best for the other person. And if you find someone that wants what's in your best interest versus their own, that's pretty good. I mean, I think with dating, you're basically wanting to find out what you want in a mate. So I think dating, you do find out a lot of things about um, others. And so you find things that you really think, oh, I want to marry someone with this trait and then other things that you don't want to. So I think um, it's a value just to get to know others and get to know things that you want to, um, that are important to you. So in that respect, but keeping the boundaries with all that in mind. I would say uh, don't buy into the fairy tale. There's something much better than that. And again, it goes back to um, investing in a person for years and years uh, because that's really the, the secret of love in my mind. Don't look for the right one, uh, become the right one, and you'll find the right one. If you have someone who is following after God and puts God first and puts you second, then you will always feel like you're first. I mean, you always feel that way. I really didn't date anybody till college. And I think I was much better prepared in college to have an understanding of what dating really was. I think you know, group interactions are fantastic. Yes. You know, multiple gender group yeah. interactions are great in high school, but I think the idea of, you know, truly forming an emotional attachment, I think, you know, people have to understand that if if you're looking at the possibility of giving your heart away, you have to understand how, how, how serious that is, and, you know, that there should never be this idea of casual dating. For me, I would tell them to Enjoy life. Don't take serious right now, because you're too young. You have to wait to mature. For me, I would say that the most important thing about, you know, like any relationship is first to be friends, you know, because he is my best friend and obviously my love. But, you know, friendship comes first, and I think it's very, very important. And choose someone that you have the same kinds of interests and the intellectual level as the same because then you can respect each other and the most important also that when I met my husband he he really didn't uh, 
really have a firm relationship with the Lord. Don't rush into things. Uh, know that if this is the person that God is wants you to be with, that you honor that commitment through Him and through His Word and take the right steps in the, to be in a relationship that's going to honor Him. Guard your heart. Your heart is the wellspring of life, as it says in Proverbs um, 4.23. And um, it's so easy for us as girls to put our heart into something too soon um, when really you're not ready. And from a child development standpoint, your brains aren't fully developed until you're 25. And so what you want now is totally different than what you're going to want later on. Guys do. Just start out with the things we've been talking about. Friendship, trust, loyalty, you know, all the other good things that come later, let them come later in life. But it has to start with a good foundation. Basically, friendship, trust, your relationship with God, your personal relationship, that's got to be right. And don't ever, like, settle. Be confident. Know who you are in Christ. Know who you are and who God made you. You have to believe that you are who God says you are and that God's going to do what God says he's going to do. You need to know that completely and take that as you and before you can even think about being in a relationship with someone else. Um, and if you have someone that has your core beliefs and is pushing you to grow and you guys are growing together, um, that's, that's when you know it's serious. The thing that matters most uh, in our marriage is the fact that my wife is a better person than I am. So it makes it really easy to be married to her. <laughs> just getting along, more importantly than anything else. Just being able to go through the high times and the low times together and, and get along. We don't, we never, I don't, I don't really feel like we ever put this huge expectation on our marriage in the way it was, you know, it wasn't a cookie cutter thing. It's supposed to look and, you know, it's, it's trying to follow God's design that he has for the two of us and for our lives and for how we're going to impact not only each other and our family, but the people around us. You, you have to be each other's best friends, otherwise it never works. You know, you have a lot of good times with your spouse, but uh, you know, there's a lot of hard times in life. And being able to lean on the Lord together, and even when you disagree about little things, uh, knowing that in the important things you have the same heart, uh, that's what I think really sustains marriages over the long term. We really just get along. We do. At the end of the day, we're best friends. Yeah, we're, I think we're a lot of like, we're very opposite personalities, but our core values and like how our minds work is a lot alike. And so we have a lot of the same interests. Yeah, I think we just try to live in the present and realize that life is precious and kind of comes and goes, so we got to take advantage of what we got. Sure. Okay. No, I thought you said, do you want me to go oh, first? Yes, if you wanted to go first. No, you go. Okay. He's so much more sensitive than I am. <laughs> That's awesome. It's the truth. That's the truth. <laughs> What's the most strength about your spouse? <laughs> a strength Sorry. about him. I have strengths. You have a lot of strengths. Like what? <laughs> I run this house. <laughs> a lot of talking, a lot of meetings. You look great today. Thank you. We're best Please. friends. Yep. Always have been. Trust. Trust. That makes us, what was the question? Well, he's sweet. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what got you through. Good. So date number two. I'm still here. The key points to keeping that marriage strong. That's right. <laughs> Should we start over? <laughs> <laughs>